Well, joining us from New York is Rami Khoury. He's a public policy fellow at the American University of Beirut. Mr Khoury, always good to get your insight uh, on a whole range of subjects, obviously a very serious subject this last few weeks. And we spoke to you earlier about the arrival of William Burns. For our viewers that uh, wouldn't have caught that uh, interview, how important is it that the Americans are sending the CIA chief into the Middle East and his arrival into Doha on Thursday? It's very important, and I would say at, at three levels. First of all, traditionally in the modern Middle East, really in the last 50, 60 years, security people have been the key people who control um, events. Uh, when uh, you remember Condoleezza Rice, maybe when she was foreign minister, uh, she came out to meet with people at a critical time, and she had a meeting with all the security uh, agency chiefs in the Arab countries, and I think it was in Cairo or Sharm el-Sheikh. So that's one thing. The second thing is that Bill Burns knows the Middle East and the Arab world really well. He's been there as ambassador, he's, and he knows the region, he knows the people, he understands them very well. And people have huge respect for him because he, he he's a, such a decent fellow as an individual. He listens, he's low-key, he's not giving you orders like other people are. Uh, he really understands uh, the human uh, dimension of things. And third of all, he is the head of the CIA. He's the top security uh, or intelligence officer in the United States. So all of these things I think, uh, make his visit particularly important. What will come out of it remains to be seen, but there's a better chance of something decent happening with him than with some of the other uh, officials who half of them are amateurs and the other half are just doing expedient pol politics. He's, he's coming into a region that you might say he's beginning to read the room and he's making his way towards, you might say, uh, the lounge, which is Doha, where he knows that those in that room are dealing with the very sensitive issue of trying to get the uh, foreign captives, uh, it's believed, released from Hamas. Delicate negotiations, and he's the man for the job to at least speak to Doha about it. Yes, and, and I think there's an issue of credibility here and authority. They, they know that Bill Burns is not going to float trial balloons and say things just off the top of his uh, head. Um, but he is somebody who comes in with a clear mission, obviously worked out with the president and the top uh, military people um, uh, as needed in the State Department. Uh, so he is dealing with a very delicate issue. And the fact that he's there is like sending in the chief uh, hostage negoti negotiator at a standoff you know, at an American supermarket or, or these things happen or in London or wherever it may be. So, yeah, I think it's an important moment. Uh, and the fact that this is happening is significant because, you know, here Hamas has got America's most, probably most respected uh, diplomat, a former diplomat and official, uh, mm -hmm. has, ha has had him personally come to talk to them. So people, I think, underestimate the importance or the symbolic value of somebody like the head of the CIA coming out uh, to do this. Uh, so this is an important gain that uh, Hamas probably feels that it has achieved, uh, not only in Bill Burns uh, and the hostage and the negotiations of prisoners and hostages, but the uh, fact that everybody around the world is talking about, um, about Hamas mm. and the hostages and the prisoners and Israeli jails and the exchanges that need to be made, NATO and uh, the G7 and uh, the American president and, and, and the head of the UN, and everybody's talking about Hamas. So we, even if they're talking about them in a negative way, calling them terrorists or whatever, the, the fact is that Hamas has achieved mo much of its political objectives. And now the uh, details have to be worked out to see if it can achieve uh, all of its objectives, mainly getting the prisoners out from Israeli jails, <clears throat> about 10,000 of them. And um, also uh, looking forward to the day when Palestinians can achieve their uh, fundamental statehood. 
uh, and, and, and rights as, uh, as, as a people, which have been denied to them for 100 years. Right. Well, with that thought uh, to one side, another element of Bill Burns' visit, certainly when he was in Israel, would have been the, the concern about what's happening at the north uh, of Israel and southern Lebanon, which is the clashes with Hezbollah. And, and one of its uh, deputy uh, leaders... Uh, Sheikh Naim Qasim is, is talking about the seriousness of the situation. They're watching very closely, but they won't tolerate any more death uh, or increased levels of death in Gaza, and that this is a serious situation that they've got to deal with. Uh, what, what should we read into the messages coming from Hezbollah and how that will be read by someone like uh, Bill Burns and, and, and translated by Tel Aviv? I think people should understand that when the senior people of Hezbollah speak out in public, which they don't do very often, but when they do, they are saying what they really feel. And if they say they're going to do something, they're going to do it. Um, and if they say they're not going to do it, they won't do it. Their, their word is probably the most important thing to them uh, right now in this current situation. Their military capabilities are very well established. But their political uh, credibility uh, is really critical. And they've been very good at making sure that people take them seriously. And they will, they're not too worried about if, 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 if it's Israel kills a few people in Lebanon and then they'll kill a few people in Israel. They're not too worried about that kind of tit for tat. It's a shame that anybody should die in any country. But if it's done at a, at a low level, it's not going to spark a whole regional war. So while, if they keep it at that level, which is likely to be the case, then they'll figure out a way to slow it down. But this is linked to the fight, to what's going on in Gaza. So if Israel has killed almost 11,000 Palestinians, 11,000 Palestinians in just over four weeks, uh, you know, that's what we should be talking about. And in fact, the other really important thing, I believe, going on now, and I've been following Middle East affairs for 55 years since I was in college. Very quickly, Rabbi, that's, we're running out of time, if we can. Yeah, what's, what's happening now is everybody is talking about crimes of war and war crimes and international humanitarian law and asking, seeing, is Israel doing this, doing that? This has never happened before in a serious way. And no. it's now happening uh, all over the place. Indeed, it, it is. And, of course, we'll continue to monitor what's going on in Gaza. Of course we will. It's always good to get your insight. Rami Khoury there for us. Thank you.